Dr. Mandelson. Good afternoon, Chairman Marino, Chairman Payne, members of the subcommittee. Thank you for inviting me to speak with you today about the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I am pleased to have the opportunity to discuss the work of USAID with you, such great supporters of Africa, and with my colleagues from the State Department with whom we work so closely. For me personally, it is a great pleasure to be back testifying before you, and, and I am very sorry Chairman Smith is, is ill and our best wishes are with him. How each country reconciles or not with violent episodes from its past is an important driver of political development. In the DRC, democratic institutions and processes play a vital role through which the country can overcome political divisions reinforced by years of conflict. During the past several years, some real progress has been made towards strengthening democratic institutions and processes in the DRC, including adoption of a revised constitution and successful elections in 2006. Through our assistance programs, the United States Government has sought to help support a stable and democratic state, one that is at peace with its neighbors and provides for its citizens. We pursue our programs with a particular focus on the costs of conflict borne by women and youth. As you know, presidential and legislative elections held in the DRC on November 28th were widely anticipated as an opportunity for the DRC to move beyond its past and advance towards democracy and stability. The Independent National Election Commission, the CENI, took primary responsibility for managing the elections with some international support. Established just eight months before Election Day, the CENI was able to register 32 million voters. Millions of Congolese citizens went to the polls. The CENI's accomplishments should not be underappreciated. However, the CENI's management of the electoral process was generally inadequate. Even allowing for the significant logistical challenges inherent to the DRC, nearly every step of the electoral process was delayed. International and domestic observers, as well as Secretary Clinton, have noted considerable flaws throughout the process in the pre-election period on Election Day in the tabulation of votes and in the process for electoral dispute resolution. In my written testimony, I discuss these issues more fully and describe steps that could be taken to improve the proficiency, transparency, and credibility of future elections in the DRC. USAID supported the 2011 election process through direct funding for the International Foundation for Electoral Systems and the Carter Center to support civic and voter education, as well as international election observation and capacity building of human rights organizations to observe the elections. The IFAS Civic Education Program reached over 19 million people, providing citizens and accurate information on elections and enabling them to effectively participate. The Carter Center deployed 10 two-person teams of international long-term election observers to all provinces in the months preceding the elections and on Election Day, working closely with domestic observers from the Catholic Church, among others. These efforts were instrumental in identifying key election-related irregularities. Moving forward, USAID has a range of ongoing programs that support citizen involvement in democratic processes and facilitate political reforms, including strengthening the rule of law institutions, including the constitutional court once it is established, civic education activities through robust partnerships with a range of civil society organizations across the DRC, good governance activities that seek to engage productive civic participation in democratic processes, including community-based organizations and civil society groups, election monitoring and human rights work implemented by the Carter Center, which will be essential for assessing any human rights violations or conflict during upcoming elections, and, of course, media sector development through inter internews network that builds the capacity of Congolese media institutions, particularly community radio stations. At the same time, USAID has been providing assistance to the DRC to support the electoral process. We have also taken, undertaken a number of activities and actions to mitigate the potential for violence such as establishing early warning mechanisms, monitoring incidents of violence, and supporting conflict and atrocity prevention activities. Our reconciliation work provides opportunities for conflict-affected groups to interact in safe spaces to address issues of mutual concern, reconcile differences, and promote understanding and trust and work on common goals. USAID is also addressing the causes and consequences of human rights abuses that are being fueled by conflict in the DRC, including sexual and gender-based violence, and trafficking in persons. And attention to these is issues is essential 
before the DRC can enter on a path to long-term sustainable development. The United States and our partners in the international community remain dedicated to supporting efforts for stability and prosperity in the DRC, although ultimately, of course, advancing democracy, human rights, and good governance there requires the engagement of the Congolese people and political commitment by the government of the DRC. We are hopeful such a path will be taken. The written testimony I submitted to the subcommittee expands on the themes I have presented, and I welcome any questions you have. 